so as you've been hearing, there are lots of options that, that are out there. And uh, our goal is to discern, you know, where God is calling us in particularity. Uh, so there are lots of decisions that need to be made, and there are many pathways to ministry. Our, um, our parent group is the Board of Ordained Ministry, and the Enlistment and Interpretation Committee, which is responsible for this event, is sort of under their, one of their um, committees. So our main focus is on uh, the ordained ministry. But we are fully aware that there are lots of other options out there. So, we go to the next one. As you've been hearing all day, the world begins with God's grace. God so loved the world that He gave His only God the Son. Whosoever believes in Him and not perish but have eternal life. This is God's offering to everybody. Right? God's grace is offered to everybody, but because of free will, we have a choice. We can decide against God's grace, God's free gift of love, salvation, or we can say yes to God's grace. We can make a decision for it. So, out of that calling of all people, you are invited to make a decision for or against God's grace. So, if it's a decision for, then the next level of calling is uh, yeah, calling or maybe calling. Okay. If this is a decision for, then we have a choice of saying no to the calling of living it out. So, you know, God offers us this free gift, but what's our response to it? You know, some people, some people say yes to the gift, but then they don't live it out in their lives. So that's another <coughs> step of decision that we all have to make. When we say yes to our calling to follow Christ, then that opens up more opportunities for us. Our calling may be to non-church work. You know, in our in our covenant group, uh, one of the guys talked about. You know, he's he's feeling gifted in being a mechanic, and uh, things are falling into place for him. God may be calling him to be a mechanic, but whatever you do, do it in the name of Christ. Whether it's a mechanic, garbage collector, scientist, teacher, all not church work, good stuff. If we say yes and it's in church work, then you have these options. A lay person, a non-ordained ministry, can involve various ministries, including being a local pastor. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that is. Certified lay ministry. And Carol's going to talk more about that. So, lots of things within the church that laity do. Youth youth leaders, uh, Christian educators, custodians, uh, all those sorts of things. It's definitely ministry, isn't it? So that would be under lay. And then the other side could be, God may be calling you into ordained ministry. So we're, we're still discerning, figuring things out. Next slide. Within that ordained ministry, you have more options. And God may be calling you to being an elder within the church, or to being a deacon. So we're going to talk now about some of those things, uh, some of those ways that God may be calling you into ministry. Uh, I'm going to <clears throat> briefly share, because the bishop already did a wonderful job talking about the ordained ministry, 
Um, the ministry of the elder, which is under ordained ministry, the elders uh, have the, the wonderful blessing of, of laying on of hands um, that the bishop performs and, and others around us uh, take part in that ordination service. Elders are those called by God to be set apart by the church and ordained into a lifetime of service to preach and teach the word, administer the sacraments, order the church for mission and service, and administer the discipline of the church. Okay? Word, order, sacrament, service. All those things fall under the uh, elder uh, ministry, the call to be an elder. Um, it's an itinerant ministry, and uh, the bishop appoints the, the elders where they're needed. The elder is the pastor in charge. Um, what's really a unique focus of the elder is the responsibility for administration of the sacraments and the ordering of the church. It's really uh, a responsibility within their calling. Now, don't ever get the idea that one calling is more important than the other. Where God calls, God will sustain, and it's all important. But each calling has a different responsibility within the church. So the elder has that responsibility of ordering the church, the sacraments, preaching the word, um, and serving. Okay. The local pastor, I don't know if you can go back, under the sort of that other way that God calls people, maybe calling people into uh, being a licensed local pastor. And this um, person is not ordained, but licensed. <coughs> Uh, to serve the mission of Jesus Christ through the work of the local congregation in the United Methodist Church. So, the licensed local pastor, even though not ordained, they are still uh, the pastor in charge of that local church where they are appointed. And in that context, they also are able to uh, do the sacraments, they're able to do communion and baptisms. Uh, one of the things that dif that's different is the process. Uh, for elders, it's, uh, you have to finish your undergraduate work and then go to seminary for three years. For a local pastor, you're not required to go through your undergraduate work, not required to do the, the full seminary work, but they have local pastor school and then course of study to prepare you for, for what you face in the ministry. So it's slightly different. In, in my own case, I really enjoyed that having that education uh, I enjoy going to college. I enjoy going to seminary. Um, a lot of times, uh, people are already involved in another profession, and they they didn't finish college, but they're feeling they're, they're sensing God's call into ministry, and so the local pastor uh, calling seems to fit better for them. Any questions about? those two opportunities for ministry. Okay. We're going to hear now about what it means to be deacon. That other ordained ministry. The ministry of deacon, as we have it in the Book of Discipline, says this. I'll just read it as a 
short little preface. Deacons are persons called by God, authorized by the church, ordained by a bishop for a lifetime ministry of word and service. Uh, that's, seven, that's different from the elder. Um, we are not ordained to sacrament. We are not ordained to order. Word and service. I'll get to those implications in a second. To both the community and the congregation and a ministry that connects the two. Those who respond to God's call to lead in service and to equip others for ministry through teaching, proclamation, and worship, who assist elders in the administration of the sacraments, are ordained deacon. Okay? So what that basically means, what that implies is, basically as a deacon, you have one foot in the church, and you have one foot outside the church. Um, the ministry of the deacon are for those... Maybe you feel called to ordination, but maybe you also feel called to some non-church work, or maybe you feel also called that I really want to have immerse myself in the community around me, and so that is what the ordination of deacon really entails. You have one foot in the church, one foot in the world around you, and it is made it is uh, intention for those who are in specialized ministry. Some form of specialized ministry, which can be inside the local church or not. Um, it's incredibly a diverse uh, order. We have deacons that serve in prisons. We have deacons that serve in social work. We have deacons doing all, all any host of things within the church and without. And without um, how their appointments go, they are uh, if they're doing primarily work within the church, and they have one appointment to a church. But if they are serving a prison, then they uh, seek. They, they have this position. They search, search out for a position. Um, if it's something that they are able to do and accept it into a position, um, then they submit it for approval to to the bishop, who then approves it as an appointment. But you always have a secondary appointment then at a local church, so you're still relating and maintaining that connection of ministry. Um, you know, this is also and one of the things that I learned going through my calling. As I, I began growing, I just did not feel that God was calling me to parish ministry, that to be the lead pastor of a church. It just was never anything that really settled well with me. And when I learned about the order of deacons, it was really like an aha moment. I don't have to do that. I don't have to fill out end of year reports. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, I can just focus on what God has created in me and what God has task me to do, which for me, that is teaching and equipping ministry. So I do, I get to do everything that I love to do. And, and it's an amazing way for me to live out my calling towards ordination, but not necessarily to be a lead pastor somewhere. Um, we don't get to do sacraments, we don't, well, and, and we get to assist with the sacraments, but we do not, I, I can't uh, baptize somebody on my own, um, I can assist my lead pastor in baptisms or communion. But I don't do those on my own. They, there is a provision for deacons to do that in very extreme circumstances. But by and large, it's not a part of our call. Um, now, other we do are still able to marry and bury. Um, because those things are not what we consider to be sacraments. So I've done marriages. I've done four or five. And, and have another one on the schedule coming up. So you're still able to do that. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is that being a deacon is somewhat still a pioneering work. This has only been around since 96, and it's still a work in progress as we discern together what all this ministry is. And so there is perhaps some bit of risk because you are not necessarily sent somewhere to a church. You, in many ways, find your own position and submit that for approval as an appointment. Um, it is much it is what people would call a call, more of a call system for deacons than necessarily being sent or itinerate like elders do. You are in the minority. Um, there, are, I am the only ordained deacon, I think, here present in this building. Um, we have another. Amanda, who helped out with our prayer stuff, is in process to be an ordained deacon. But we are very much the minority, which means that not everything is tailored to, to deacons. In some places, that may mean you have to make sure those concerns are brought up, and sometimes it means... Letting that go because you know there's only a few of you out there. But it also comes with it an amazing responsibility to invest yourself in the connectional system to make sure that people know that this option is out there. Because I know what it felt like when I felt like going through the process 
I sort of felt like I was being pigeonholed into a one-track way, and it just was so unsettling for me. And I remember hearing and learning about the Deacon track and, and feeling that amazing sense of release and freedom that this is what I'm called to do. And so there are others that you may encounter. And so there is some way, some, some burden of responsibility to make sure that this is made aware of, that this option is a possibility for folks. And so for whoever was interested in mechanical work, maybe you're still called to ordination, but not necessarily an ordained elder. Maybe you're called to be an ordained deacon or something like that. And so it's just an incredibly diverse ministry, something to consider. How many of you are kids? Exactly what you were going to do when you were four. Yeah. And then when you turned 16, did you know what you wanted to do exactly then? Kind of changed, yeah. You know, God's, God in my life was like that. And for many of us, God is like that. Boy, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew exactly how I was going to live my life. I could tell you what I was going to do at 50 when I was only 20. I mean, I had it all planned out. But what I didn't think is God had a plan already. God had a plan for me. And remember I told you before about those going to Ohio or Kansas or wherever you're going to go, those big trips? I had it all planned. I knew where I was traveling from Pennsylvania and I was going to get all the way over to Kansas. What I didn't take for account is the fact I wasn't sure when I took the right or the left hand turn. And you ask my husband, we do have a little discrepancy there. But God in God's wisdom always guided me. Carol, go to the right this time. Go to the left. Let's stay here for a while. It's a fork in the road. Let's stay here for a while. See, when I became a nurse, I never envisioned that in this time of my life that I would be saying to a group like you, I've had the pleasure of serving a church as a director of health ministries for the last 10 years. That I'm not in critical care anymore, but I'm actually working with people who are in the process of leaving this life, going to another life. I have the distinct privilege of when people call in the middle of the night and say, Carol, I'm at Hershey ER. We're not really sure what's going on with the little one. And God, and God's wisdom, allows me to go there and pray with them. If you had asked me when I was 20, that's what I'd be doing now, I'd say, God, you got this all wrong. I'm not your person. I don't even know that much about the Bible back then. But God is like that. God has a plan for each of us. For some of us, it may be an ordained elder. I'm sure if you had asked Eric when he was four, he was going to be an ordained elder. I don't think so. If you had asked him at 16, I don't think so. Bishop Middleton already told you, I don't think when you were 20 you knew you were going to be the bishop, right? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, whether you are an ordained elder, ordained deacon, or whether you're not ordained, and like me, you honor the call upon you as a lay person, I really believe that God's not pyramiding all of this. God says, I call you. Are you going to honor that call? I'm not asking you to plot it from here in Kansas. All I'm asking you to do is Take the first couple steps and trust me that the journey you take is going to be unique to you, that the journey you take is going to mold and shape you for exactly that person that God is calling you to be. So you know what? Right now in your life, you're saying, oh, maybe when I'm 20, maybe when I'm 25, maybe when I'm 30. It doesn't work that way. God calls you. And you need to listen. Now, all of these things we've talked about, probably thinking, I don't know. And that's fine, because you know questions are good. Because when you're not, when you're little, not quite sure what's going on, in my life, it makes me listen to God more. When I think I've got it all together, who do I need to talk to? It's when God puts that thing in the pit of your stomach and says, I really don't know what I'm supposed to do here at the fork of the road. 
people tell me that I have this gift, maybe you've heard this. Maybe your pastor says, I really think you need to come here today. Or maybe there's something about you that you think, gosh, am I really calling you to this ministry? This unsettling, if you read any of the Bible stories, God puts them in all of the people in the Bible. You know, Mary didn't jump up and say, hey, yeah, you got it right, it's me. I don't think so. But I think as you're sitting here today and you're listening to all these people, let me tell you something. They didn't have it all together then either. Okay? And questions are good. So if you don't know what it is God's calling you, this is a great time to talk to your pastor. This is a great time to find out who your superintendent is and talk to them. This is a great time to go on resources, like talk to any of the people in the room here that's been talking with you and, and helping you today, learning different things. We're open to that. Using some of the things that you've learned today to take home and say, okay, God, help me hear you better. And if you're faithful to God, you will go exactly where God's calling you. Whether it be the ordained deacon, ordained elder, whether it be the local pastor, or whether it be a lay ministry like mine. There are some people who are lay speakers, happen to be a lay speaker. You can be a lay speaker. How many lay speakers do we have here? Absolutely. Go tell your pastor, I feel called to be a lay speaker. I would like to go and talk before our congregation. Let them know how I feel, what I see in the Bible, how I see God working in the midst of us. And you can go to school and do that. You can take another course and you become a certified lay speaker. That means, hey, we can actually go to our church and you can speak before us as well. You can share with us what you hear and see God doing in the world. Talking about going from rural churches to other churches. What a great day. Helping each other hear God and see God in places I've never been. In your packet, you have a thing that's called lay, um, a certified lay minister. That's another type of ministry that lay people can do. That you can help with the elder. You may actually provide leadership for a small church or maybe a particular area in that church. And for all of you, there's a factor in there called steps into lady leadership. You know, what do you realize or not? If you're here today, you're listening to God. You're reaching out and saying, God, I really want to hear you. I really want to know what it is you have planned for my life. Each and every one of them have a form of leadership. Find out, explore that, explore those gifts, and read this. Because right now, today, as God is continually telling you to take the right hand, the left hand, or maybe go over the bridge or under the bridge, right now, God can be forming you in roles of leadership. That someday it's all going to come together. Just as a deacon had told me many years ago, I yearned to be that which God called me to be. I went to school. I became a teacher. I worked in the church. I knew I wasn't to be an ordained elder. But I knew I was called to be something. And in 1996, when the United Methodist Church said, God calls some people to be ordained as deacon, she said, right here, right now. This is why I took the right turn, the left turn, under the bridge, over the bridge for this exact moment. Because this is exactly what God called me to do. God will be with you on this journey. God will help you with the bridges, with the underpasses, and the right and left hand turns. What you have to do is take that first step. And if you need help with how to do that, there's a whole church out there who's willing to help you. Because as you saw that movie this morning, that is our world. And the way that Christ is going to love and help this world is if we're the hands and feet of Christ. Mm -hmm. I have 40-year-old grandchildren. You. You're the church today, and you're going to be the one standing up here helping them be the church of tomorrow. I think... Thank you for coming. I thank you for listening. And I thank you for being the disciples you are. Don't walk out of here. 
do not walk out of this from thinking, I don't think God's calling me. Walk out of this from asking, where? My name is Warren LaBachma. I am the uh, Director of Young People's Ministry and Christian Education for the conference. I am one of the conference uh, council ministry staff people, uh, and I work for you. Um, as Carol mentioned, there are ways for you to plug into work in ministry right now, today, before you leave. Uh, and I'm just going to mention a few of them. Um, we have a Young People's Ministry Council that you can be a part of. Uh, and one of the things that we do is we run a website uh, that we feature articles on uh, youth and young adult ministry. Um, we have places where you can find out more information. Sorry. <laughs> Um, Your ministry? Uh, you can find out more about uh, uh, colleges in the area and, and what kind of uh, ministries they have in case you're college bound to a college here in uh, the central and northeastern Pennsylvania area. Um, but there's all sorts of things you can find out about that. Uh, you can also serve on various committees within the conference. Uh, conference committees are always looking for youth and young adults to serve. Um, and if you are interested in serving in a variety of ways, on a mission board, or uh, on uh, board of boarding ministry, or uh, the uh, uh, Peace with Justice, uh, I can't think of all of them right offhand, but if you want to serve uh, on the conference level, uh, there are ways to get plugged in and you can contact me and I can get you in touch with the right people and how you can do that. How many of you are uh, working in youth ministry? There are a few. I want to let you know about a uh, program uh, that I'm offering. Uh, my counterpart from the Penn Delaware Conference is going to be coming doing a continuing Continuing Education Day um, for youth pastors, youth leaders. Um, we're doing it twice, and there's a yellow form. It's called Youth Ministry A to Z uh, that he's done in his conference. Um, I encourage you to come to that. You can meet other uh, youth pastors, uh, youth leaders in your area to be a part of that. Uh, it's $20, and that includes lunch. Uh, great guy, uh, his name's Shane, uh, wonderful, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, the day is going to be kind of like, have you ever seen those ABC books? A is for Apple, B is for... He, he made up something like that for youth ministry. And so whether you're a veteran or whether you're a brand new youth ministry and you're plugged into it now, you should uh, try to attend that. Um, the last thing I would just mention to you are two things. There are two cards out there on, on my display table, my business card, and then a card that has uh, the Young People's Ministry uh, website on it. Be, feel free to pick those up and get in touch with me. We are looking for youth and young adults to uh, serve as uh, lay equalization members to the annual conference. Which is to say, um, we need you to come and represent youth and young adults at our annual conference meeting. And that's one of my responsibilities, is to get those names of, of people who are interested. Are there anyone here who went last year as a lay member? Raise your hand, huh? Come on, don't be afraid. Um, uh, you can talk uh, to Bruce, and uh, he can tell you about what it is. Uh, but if you're at all interested in serving uh, on the annual conference level, I would love to find a way for you to plug in today. Uh, you don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to get any education. We'll take you today. All right? So uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and thank you.